I already know what you're doing. And okay, well, I'll tell some about that as well. Yeah. It's not Kai SQL? No, uh, that, that was the first disappointment. I couldn't dis dis uh, persuade the others to make the company Kai SQL. They didn't want to change the spelling of Sky to S K A J. No. Not even that, no. No. Okay. Those are the blows that you have to take sometimes. But you can talk, yes, and we'll still do what you need. Yes, yes. I think that would be a good. It's, and it's even short, I think. Yes, yes, and lunch is, is always a hard. Officially, yes, but the people are still. <laughs> well, that's why it's a 45 minute that's thing, right? Color, so you can buddy. wait for 15 minutes and then start. Not my problem. This guy's problem. Yes, yes. But, Kai, it's more people in it at uh, Collaborate, so. <laughs> there's always a good, there's always a self aligning, right? Indeed. I will wait for two more minutes and then we will start. Then people will have to have swallowed. I know this tower. Ah, oh, you do? Yeah. Who was the architect? Uh, now you're asking too much. But I had to look for the, the elephant for quite some while. <laughs> He's not there. Yes, more spectators. Good, good, good. So once you've sit, taken a seat, then we'll start. which I have somewhat uh, adapted to the environment where we are. So this is a picture I took yesterday. That's, uh, if I am informed correctly, this is the elephant tower here in, uh, or there in Kaljari. Uh, the purpose for, from my point of view here with presenting the SkyScale reference architecture is to get your feedback. So, uh, I have taken pen and paper, paper is there, pen will be here, uh, in order to gather your, your comments on our thinking on what the reference architecture is. Uh, so, from your perspective, well, why attend this, this presentation? Well, the idea with the reference architecture is, as is spelled out here in two words, to deliver simplicity. So the uh, earlier times of MySQL, uh, when you look at history, history is always easier to interpret than today because we know what happened. And MySQL was then part of the LAMP stack. 
And of course it didn't feel simple at that point in time because we were living those times, but, but now looking back, well, MySQL grew as part of Linux Apache, MySQL plus IDPHP Perl or Python. And that, I think, is something that most people are... Uh, that's the way we, we look at how MySQL grew up. You usually see a database grow up uh, together with some kind of an environment. There were other databases for other environments and in the case of MySQL, of course it works with other than those P's and other than the L and A, but, but that, that's the home turf. Well, now the home turf, I think, is something different. So, people who tend to use MySQL tend to use also a number of other uh, products or environments. And the reference architecture is an attempt to put these together into one bucket or package or, or distribution. So, looking at it first from just the word perspective, what do we mean by a reference architecture, what do others mean? Of course, it might be that a couple of years from now, a reference architecture is a buzzword, and, and uh, uh, buzzwords tend to get watered out. What we used as, as a starting point for our choice of the word reference architecture is Wikipedia, where they say that the reference architecture, now freely quoting, uh, is, is a set of tools or products that fit somehow together uh, and are used commonly together. And now, <coughs> the, co the, the compilation that we have uh, in the Skyscraper Reference Architecture is first of all a set of, shall we say, common practices, best practices. And that, that's one starting point. Then another starting point is uh, we want it to be easy for those who use these standard or de facto standard components together to use them or even those who are new to the environment to pick them because it's not always obvious for everybody how to pick these, these components together just as it wasn't self-evident for those uh, who started in the very early days of LAMP that lamp belonged together towards the middle and the end, well, everybody used it, so it was, uh, uh, it was a no-brainer. Now, I'd like to think that part of the value of the reference architecture is the fact that it's a, a set of compiled products of which you, as an educated audience, might have a differing opinion, but uh, of which the general public of people whom we are focusing the reference architecture to does see some value in. And then, a uh, third component of why there's value in the reference architecture or, or what the attempted value is, comes from the fact that we provision these. So provision meaning it's sort of a distribution, sort of a way to get those products that belong to the reference architecture in one, uh, in one installation. So you can configure them, set them up, and get them downloaded through our site. Now, uh, before I get too far into this, don't let me set your expectations too high. So this is something new, it's something under development, and we call it 0 0.1 or 0 .0 0 0.2 at this point in time. Yes, there is something to be had. Yes, you can go to our website for the uh, reference architecture and you can configure your own setup but it doesn't have all the products that belong there. And also it is not yet a fully, shall we say, commercial enabled uh, environment so there are some of the products uh, which really rightfully has a place in a reference architecture that do not yet have a, uh, shall we say, commercial place in it because this reference architecture also has a, a commercial side to it in the way of a partnership. So when we introduced the reference architecture at the MySQL conference last month, it's all, with the exception of the Elephant Tower, it's, it's the same presentation, uh, we, we had a panel of companies together at that presentation who provide crucial components of that reference architecture. 
So it was not a, a full list of all partners, but it still is a, the, a list of the key core, uh, some of the key core elements of the reference architecture. So uh, now this slide set, as, as, as you have understood from my description, comes from a presentation to a far less technical audience than you are, so bear with me. Uh, I will not spend time on those slides, but, but uh, the starting point for the slide deck still is the commercial use of MySQL. So, the MySQL world, the top 20 users of, uh, the, to of, of the web, of the top 20 websites, 16 of them use MySQL in one fashion. Now, what does that have to do with the reference architecture? I think that the point here is that these guys have one set of needs, but those who we usually encounter in our own companies and, and who, who our customers usually are, have a different set, set of, of needs. So these guys on the list of the top 20s can afford not just a special relationship with whoever uh, they, they want in the industry, uh, be it the trademark holder of MySQL or be it somebody who they consider to, to have uh, the best expertise, if, or both of the above. Uh, these companies can even afford to employ individual, uh, individuals that are truly specialists in MySQL and at the top two ones, of course, here will be Google and Facebook in that, that arena. So their, their needs, yes, they are good role models and yes, they make MySQL to be a very known product, but let's not mix them with the rest of the world. These are, are the, the shall we say, usual companies using MySQL, small and medium websites, enterprise customers, uh, who need technical support, they need monitoring, administration, tools, they need simple interfaces, and they at times also need consulting and training. Now looking at the left uh, most set of three bullets, they are the ones that we together can bunch into then what after a couple of slides becomes to be the uh, reference architecture. So um, this is uh, one of the favorite slides of Ivan Zoratti, who is the mental inventor, the, 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 the main father of the whole concept and, and he was exposed to the MySQL subscription from its, its outset six years ago and uh, he was in a position of, of being a leading sales engineering, meaning he gets to listen to plenty of customers. They have uh, a certain number of frequently asked questions and, and these are the ones here now. That, that he, he has got lots of questions about them. I would expect them to be areas of questions that, that you are exposed to as well. And, and they form the background for, what, uh, for the need of a common framework. So you could say that what we are talking about uh, when we uh, talk about reference architecture is a framework. Uh, without such a framework, the end user or end customer is exposed to services. Lots and lots of services and, and buying services is an expensive thing. Uh, there are plenty of, of, of them here. This set of bullets is, is provided here mainly to make the point that consulting and uh, services of various kinds is the default answer of the open source industry to complexity. But services at some uh, if you get them from too many places, will not really simplify stuff, will not really reduce complexity. And the idea here is to reduce complexity. So, uh, this is more of a marketing buzzword, but the most comprehensive architecture around MySQL, scalable, adaptable, and cloud ready. So, what you can expect from it, I partly already set these expectations, it's a conceptual structure, a logical organization, a way of putting together known abbreviations into a picture built around MySQL. And built around MySQL really here means only frequently used in conjunction with MySQL. So a database doesn't live alone. 
It used to live in the lamp stack, in the case of MySQL, it now lives in an ecosystem which is a bit more complex, and this is our attempt at describing that ecosystem. So, looking at the reference architecture from another point of view, it's an evolving set of products that fit together. So, products that fit together, that's, that's important. It's also an evolving set, meaning that uh, it, it's evolving in two ways. One, our reference architecture also is anchored into uh, a service on the web and that supports only a particular set of products. So, don't expect it to have all the products that rightfully belongs in the reference architecture today. We will increase that amount of products throughout the year uh, and then uh, later on as well, but mostly we will try to cover the central pieces of the reference architecture through the provisioning system this year. So it evolves just uh, by the way of a stage delivery, not everything can be delivered at once. And then of course also the market evolves, so uh, the products that satisfy certain needs will be dependent upon time. It then also is a partnership ecosystem with uh, what we call the best of breed from MySQL AB times. So now looking at, I mean, there was a question before the presentation started about what SkySQL is. So most of us in our company have previously worked for MySQL AB up until February, every single person had worked for MySQL AD and there were then a bit less than 30, now there are a bit more than 30 of us. And uh, what we do is we provide services and products around MySQL uh, with more or less the same mentality as we used to do during MySQL AB times. Because we know each other, we know how MySQL AB works, and, and uh, we know how to work together and more, more importantly we believe we know what the customers and users expect. We are directing ourselves at the paying customer of, of MySQL so this is not a not, uh, Monty program. Uh, we do have a close collaboration with them at, at Monty program and sometimes we half jokingly and half, half uh, with all, all uh, uh, seriousness say that, that we separate state and church with us then being the commercially focused ones and, and multi-program being the ones, uh, church-like ones, uh, focused on, on spreading a particular form, uh, MariaDB, which we are supporting but, but not, not uh, have on our, we do not have it on our agenda. So why did that we bring up this uh, infomercial under Point number three, a partnership ecosystem. Well, uh, we inherited uh, our experience, or we uh, gathered our experience through work at MySQL AB, and we were working with a number of partners there who are now not always continuing their partnership with uh, the current uh, owners of, of MySQL AB. And since we know these, these uh, players in the ecosystem, and we have we believe to, to have a fairly good understanding of their capabilities, that's how we build up our partnership ecosystem and the reference architecture ties it all together. So we partner with those with whom it makes sense for the end user to use the product together with MySQL. And you can also expect now, as, as already mentioned, this reference architecture to have an implementation it's an alpha implementation, that's why it's at 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 of a provisioning system. And provisioning here is meant how do I get these products installed and configured on my server. So there's, there's a web service called config.skyscale.com which is active today but which doesn't uh, fulfill all steps yet and it's only ha uh, for covering a part, uh, subset of the, the uh, reference architecture, but it, it already now uh, gives you an idea of, of how we are delivering the re reference architecture, not just having it as slideware. 
So there's, uh, if you're looking at the implementation now through this year, there's selection on testing on our side of the components and integrating them, uh, the, the aforementioned provisioning part. Uh, and we uh, do have monitoring software and administration. We do support and technical services around, around it. But now for the, the more technical part, so there's, there's two pictures here following each other. This is the first one and then it will get uh, some products into it. But looking here at, at the, the general framework first, we have the biggest box here representing the Mayan scale database, storage engines and extensions. And that of course now can mean MariaDB or it can mean Bristle, it can mean MepSQL and so on. Uh, so what we are referring to here are the ones that we uh, have seen commercial traction for. Uh, it's not as if the reference architecture here would see as it ta its task to say that the best MySQL distribution is X, move to X. No, it, it, that's not the type of, of, of uh, concept we're looking at. Uh, there are situations where X is the best solution for you. There are others where Y is the best solution. Or it might be that Y would be your best solution, but you sit in with a large installed base of X. It doesn't make necessarily, even if Y would be better than X, it might not make sense for you to migrate. But that's the core. Then we have the monitoring and administration part to the left of the picture. We have some plugins that are directly attached to the database, and below it we have infrastructure, uh, structure, and on top we have various integration and migration tools and on the right hand side we have applications. So as opposed to the LAMP era where, where LAMP was the reference for MySQL, nowadays there is a set of <coughs> applications that are very frequently used with MySQL uh, or built upon MySQL or installed in, in, air, in uh, companies that are open source aware. And, and these can also be uh, recommended and these can, can uh, fit together in a way that we feel uh, warrants the, the inclusion of them into the reference architecture. So here, uh, looking now at, at, at the same slide but including a couple of names, I think that uh, the one uh, box referencing the database itself should contain names that, that are fairly familiar to you. So those are the ones that we had with us on stage. Uh, most of them, we had Drizzle, Monte Program, Calcom, ScaleDB and Schooner uh, on stage. And we, we also had the monitoring software on the left, WebYog, with us in the, uh, in the introduction of, of the reference architecture. On the uh, infrastructure side, uh, for HA and for various types of, of, of cloud uh, growth, we have Linbit and Zimori, and on an operating system level, of course, then Ubuntu and, and Canonical. Uh, of course, you might ask here, so the, do all these uh, components of the reference architecture do they form a unit where every single one of them is needed in order for it to work? And the obvious answer to that is no. Of course, uh, this will not require you to use all of them. So you can use a subset of them and it makes sense for you to, to still use also the provisioning system because the provisioning system uh, asks for your particular needs and it will configure uh, the distribution or, or the installation package according. So that provisioning system has a, now, now we, we come to the area of more or less uh, uh, slide where, uh, since not all of this is implemented, but the provisioning system has a configurator where you configure uh, the modules that are part of the reference architecture Sky, which is config.skysky.com and it is live and you can configure your HA solution with it, you can configure your application solution with it, but we do expect to add partners and add, add uh, modules there. Now of course you, one thing I would ask if I were you is okay, 
given that I'm mentioning the word partner and they're using words like commercial here and some at the same time talking about the reference architecture, is this now a commercial thing or is it something which is open, uh, open for the community? Now the answer there is it's sort of both and uh, I do not want to set an expectation whereby this is uh, uh, mm, an initiative aimed primarily at developers or, or community users. This is aimed at commercial users primarily. That said though, we do not limit the use of uh, the, the provisioning system for open source users. So, uh, the, the main difference in, in, in uh, the commercial and open source version or, or the, the main reason why we underline the commercial aspect of this is that not all components of the reference architecture in itself are open source components. So looking for instance at WebEO, I think it's by far the, the superior way of doing monitoring for MySQL uh, in a very MySQL specific manner. It has advantages such as not requiring the installation of an agent which makes it uh, in several respects better than the uh, MySQL Enterprise Monitor. But neither the MySQL Enterprise Monitor nor WebEO are free components in the free and open source software sense. So, so the framework here, uh, yes it's a reference architecture, and yes it centers around an open source database, but no, it's not something which is entirely uh, FOSS. So that there are components here which would require a commercial relationship with whoever the provider of that product is anyway. So, um, another point from the history of MySQL was the, the 15 minute rule, which has been widely quoted and which now has been, uh, there are newer presentations like from, from this year's users conference, the, the MySQL uh, installer is, is uh, pointed out as being the three minute rule because you can do stuff in three minutes. Well, I think of course it's clear that over the years you can put harder requirements and more, uh, more stringent rules on, on how easy it, is, it should be to install. However, uh, the easy installations are by far trivial in comparison to the more complex environments in, involving HA and involving replication and those are the ones that we uh, attempt at simplifying, not to any magic number of 15, but still to, to simplify uh, the, the, the installation and configuration of beyond just the uh, point of, of proving that yes you can get something clever out of MySQL in a short while. So that's the difference here between basic and advanced and of course there is some level of, of uh, differentiation between those who are paying customers and those who are not, but there's no limitation to the access of, of the uh, configuration system to begin with. So, so here are the ones, uh, a couple of slides uh, directly from the, the website. Uh, the current version out there just offers four alternative standard server, standard and application, HA and HA and replication. And it, it asks a couple of questions related to your server names and, and operating systems, which we do not yet provide a full, a full set of, and uh, your desired memory allocation, which we will have to simplify for you as well, or for, not perhaps not for you, but, but for uh, more non-technical users. And based on that, uh, after this, when you, when you uh, have supplied your email address, uh, and uh, ticked in these values, you will get an email with a set of URLs and that email with URLs, uh, if you click on those links, you get a download package which is tailored to what you have answered in this configurator. So that's one of the core points for this uh, session here. Is I would be very, very happy if you uh, used this and tested it and, and gave some responses to us. But that said, don't expect it to fully work yet, don't expect it to be complete, 
There will even be situations with fairly trivial mistakes and we will start marketing this properly once we have a feedback system whereby there will be automatic feedback from the installation scripts so that we know why these installation scripts didn't work in your sign. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with the situation that installing a set of, of uh, packages on a clean computer will work just fine, but installing the same set of packages where some have earlier versions and some have some kind of conflicts will result in, in, uh, in bugs. Now, uh, we do not want to uh, set the, give this out to everybody to, uh, or encourage everybody to test it widely before we have uh, an automatic feedback so that we know what the cases are uh, or where it, it, it failed, but given that, that this point in time hasn't occurred yet and I'm still standing here and we have this open DB campaign in Sardinia, I do encourage you to test it, I just don't want you to expect that, that it works fully yet. So, so your feedback can here be just an easy form of replying to such an email and we value your feedback and we will uh, improve on the system accordingly and of course those improvements will then be available open source as, as they, the, the ones are open source. Now, that said, open source for a web service is something different. It's, it's not as if we would release the software that created this, but, but we continue to provide the packages uh, as, as we are doing right now. So, that's basically the, the background of the reference architecture, and I don't think I have any more. Nope. Yeah, there's an invitation to a party that already has occurred, so that's probably not the slide to leave up. I think that this is, is more or less the uh, most detailed, if, if not too detailed at this point in time, picture of the reference architecture. And, and the key points was that we think it pays off to tell people, users of MySQL, open source users in general, which products feel, fit together, we think it, it uh, the collection that we have provided so far and which is described on the web does that and we believe that it's a good idea to uh, do two more things. One is to have a joint set of commercial uh, offerings so that, uh, that, that these companies partner and that uh, the installation provisioning system, as we call it, of these products work works easily so that you can get several of them at one point in time. So that's the basic introduction to the reference, the SkyScale reference architecture. And I'd be very keen on understanding from you whether you think it makes sense, whether it's usable for you and your users and customers. And I now used we have 10 minutes until the quarter two, so we have a good 10 minutes for questions. Yes, to say. Can we see a, um, an example? Can you see it working or is to... You, you to can see it? an example. So, so if I am connected to the web, I can uh, <coughs> show you something which might qualify as an example if I find my browser. if I am able to type. <coughs> so this is the, the uh, config uh, configurator where you have these four alternatives that I mentioned. You can go then, let's say we take the most complicated one here, I believe it's HA and application, then uh, you'll get a number of questions here as you can see, we just support CentOS and Red Hat at this point in time. Here's where you fill in the various uh, uh, parameters that are necessary. Like here in the case of Heartbeat, you fill in the addresses and the DRDD IP addresses. And uh, if you don't really know how, what to fill in here and what kind of units, there are uh, explanations. And what happens then, and, and that's the one that I cannot demo, uh, is that when you fill this out and you uh, 
do the second step, of course it will now complain, that's the place where you fill in where this thing should be distributed and after 15 minutes, depending on server load, you'll get an email which has a number of URLs in it and, and that's the package, that's the one that you install on your, on your um, servers, of course it's, if it's replication it's not just one and, and uh, that's basically the, the, whole, the whole idea. So Configurator is a web service and then it, it creates a number of packages on our download server and you download those and then you install and run. The package is containing also all the other additional software from the partners. Yes. So also the monitoring or uh, the DRBD and so on and so on. Yeah, all of those that exist here. So as you can see here now it's DRBD and replication. So don't expect monitoring there. Uh, but, 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 but yes, the answer is yes. So do you like Perl or PHP modules or anything like that, or is that something that you can add on to it? Or? We, we think that we shouldn't uh, add that, those details in the, the beginning, so, so PHP and Perl modules, no, not really. Those who, are, who want to influence their environment on that level are usually fairly skilled, and, and of course also the, 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 the complexity of, of doing that for us is high. Right. So don't expect it, in the, in, at least in the beginning, and depending on how this thing uh, works and how it's uh, ac uh, accepted by the community, that might be a really interesting area to, right. to, for us to well, explore. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of uh, third-party tools like MapKit, for example. You That's a different Perl, story, yes. So. Well, but you need Perl DBI for that. Yes, so, so if, if we look at this picture and, and, and say that, sure, uh, I would want one particular thing like Mathkit and it, it, it requires a different setup, then that's, that's uh, an area which we would have to explore earlier. But, so for now the configuration is one shot, so you can store the profile uh, of the configuration that you can uh, uh, retrieve later. Yep, that's uh, the, can you retrieve later and can you change your profile? That's one of the uh, uh, upper uh, one of the commercial only things where you can store your profile and then change it and, and go, go get it later, whereas if you're a, an open source user you have to start from the beginning every time. That said, of course, there's two screens, there's not much to much work to, to enter there, but you can edit it if you're a, a commercial user. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm gonna maybe a little bit skeptical here, but I'm not quite sure on how brought your target audience really might be on that one because because I, I think the, the goal is <coughs> set very high mm -hmm. and you yourself mentioned the many different systems you might encounter out there in the real world and to make such a wizard really work in all cases is I think a very difficult thing to achieve Yep. So, so I, I'm just not quite sure. I mean, I mean, I've the, the, the very simple users that maybe don't even need this, and then I see many, many cases where I have something that's just a tiny little bit different, and will this tool then still work for me? So that's uh, the, the, my, my first impression without having tried it out, so maybe it... Yeah, but I think you have sort of all of the information already through the presentation in, in shall we say, our ambition level. And, and what, what I hear from you is that uh, you see this environment as fairly complex and that the complexity is hard to reduce through a provisioning system. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that's how your message comes across and, and it's, it's, it's a thought that we are aware of and it, it's definitely a challenge to, to do this, so I'm not trying to sort of oversimplify it, but also I do think that there's lots of value in it, so if it's, uh, we, we start by a small subset, we just do HA and, and replication 
and that's manageable. And then adding individual things on top of it, it still remains manageable, like in the case of WebJob, uh, having monitoring on all of this. It's not, it, it, it doesn't uh, it, uh, explode, the, combina the combinations do not explode there. But if, if yes, if you add any number of combinations inside the database box with Pocketech, Alpoint, ScaleDB, Monte Program and, uh, and Drizzle, yes, you will find so many permutations that it, 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 it's going to be hard to, to work and we will, uh, to make it work and we will concentrate on a subset that we believe is both frequently needed and, and technically feasible. So, so I acknowledge your, your <coughs> worry or, or skepticism and it's one that we are trying to take uh, into account from the beginning. Because, don't get me wrong, actually I'd love to have something that really works for all, all the, because it simplifies my life basically yes. and, and everybody's life. And, but, but then soon you, you come to the moment where you want to have something separated, you know, on different hardware parts of the system, then you would already have to provide a I will yeah. certainly try it out. Great! Let's work okay. 01 or 02. Other comments? Just to be clear, the final result will be a set of scripts or the full software that I have to install? B. The full set. A download package. <coughs> a download package of everything. And that's tailored account according to what the uh, first method. According to what you entered. And then like also yes. configuration files, otherwise it wouldn't make much sense to ask for a number of yes. megabytes. Does some of that already work? Sorry? Does some of that already Some work? of that works, but, but so, so we have had, like if you look at this slide here, the one with uh, where we are asking for a standard server uh, and replication. Yes, some of this we have worked, uh, most of this works on a clean installation. So what we are now trying to do is to uh, get this to work on a non-clean installation and by non-clean I mean you already have an older version of some of the software and, and we want to resolve that, that, that uh, thing. And at the point in time where we will start marketing this more properly is the one when we uh, get feedback on the non-working systems, uh, configurations in an automated way. So this will have involve a handshake back, back, of course it will ask the end user, but, but still uh, the end user, even if it's a technical end user, it's too much to ask that person to identify all the, uh, uh, in an exact manner, the, uh, the set of packages that are now installed and the ones that, that are being installed. That's something to do in an automated fashion. And when that automation works, then, then we believe we have a, a QA loop where, where we can uh, uh, get sufficient amounts of automatic information for us to, to converge uh, to a working, a good working subset. And what, what uh, operating systems are you targeting? So we are targeting the usual suspects. Now, we, as said here, Red Hat and uh, and CentOS are the ones in the beginning, and there's a, a, a list of, of operating systems that we, we are may, uh, targeting and, and the order of them. We will not make that complete because of complexity. So Debian will belong to it, for instance. Okay. And how do you deal with uh, updates of the different packages that I get within my package? So, so this is not an update provisioning system yet, and we do not yet sort of ping you and say, hey, you have a new update for this and that. But I think that is, uh, there's a lot of value in that, and, and if we can have judgment saying, given that you have, and this would require us to know your profile a bit longer, uh, a bit more, uh, given the profile you provided, I think you can skip this update, but that's up, that update is relevant for you. But, but again here, uh, this is not on our primary roadmap for the very reasons that you described. This is so complex that it's hard for a person to know it even on a personal level and then to encode it into a system. Wow, no, that's, that, that's not easy. So you, it can give stupid advice easily, but, but to give smart advice, I'd, I'd rather not pretend to give advice than, than, uh, 
than, than do something which, which is just smart as or, or self-evident. Are you growing up a totally new framework to the configuration, or is this something open source which you're building? Because I can imagine lots of people already have configuration management frameworks in place, and they would want to integrate with this. So this is not really, a, in that sense, a quant configuration management one. It, it, it asks you for the number of, uh, for the configuration parameters. It doesn't deduce them, so in that sense. But you generate them and you distribute them. So you generate a sort of config files. Sure. And the question was? The question was, do you use a framework to do that, or did you reinvent Wielder? So there's, there's a, I, I confess, there's a, a, an element of reinventing some wheels there, but we will, uh, <coughs> as, uh, as, as this one grows, then we can see components that we can reuse. There's no point for us to do Just unnecessary reinvention. How do you see people who are already using C Engine or Puppet or Chef? using this tool, because that's what most enterprises are doing. See if Engine and Puppet and Chef doesn't give you the right version of the right things in your mix. If you're downloading, you know, uh, you know, uh, MySQL Server and DRBD, see if Engine doesn't know from no, Puppet it doesn't, doesn't know it, from. It could, the tool could provide recipes and manifests that actually know about that, so you can integrate with an enterprise infrastructure, rather than having yet another tool we have to manage with. Okay, well, because in CF Engine now, do you, or Puppet, do you have scripts that go and get the packages, or do you have a local package repository? Because you could... I use local package repository. Right, so you could download this package and put it into the package repository. Yeah, but then my config is in the package, and that's something I never want to do. Ah, okay, yeah. I should be able to do that. Right, right, now I understand. Hmm. That was a good point. Notes taken. And how does it work with upgrades, since we're talking about that? Because if you upgrade, you don't need a new config, necessarily. You might need some changes to your existing. Yeah, so uh, as I said, we do not do any any notifications of it. And it's, it's, in that sense, it's up to the uh, uh, end user or user of this system to decide whether to invoke it again to get uh, an update. But But I think that's... That's a highly relevant other point. How do we deal with, uh, how do we, uh, what kind of expectations do we set for upgrades? Because uh, <clears throat> it's not as if running this configurator once will solve your situation for, forever, and we should have a good answer to, to the role of this system when it comes to, to doing upgrades. Even if, even if it means there's no role, then, then, then we should have that answer. Otherwise, it's a one-off thing. Okay, I think I've used the more than the 45 minutes, more or less the 50 minutes. So, so thank you for your attention and your valuable comments. And I hope you, you go out there and, and test this. And as I said, uh, we will notify through the usual media when the configurator is at such a point where we want broad testing. but but. Uh, testing by people like you and, and the email replies, are, that's very much welcome already now. Thank you.